What is pole planning in construction? In this video, we're gonna talk about how you do it, why you need it, and some key tips that you can take to go run your own meetings and utilize it for your project. So what is pull planning? What's everybody talking about? What is this thing? And why do they ask us to pull it backwards? Why are we putting sticky notes on a board and doing it backwards? I don't think like that. And then if I do buy into it, which I'm not committed to yet, what are the steps? And I think you will once you see those steps. It's super easy and it's absolutely wonderful as a process. And what are the two most important things that will keep you safe and comfortable and confident when you're utilizing this process on your project? We'll find out right now. Okay, so here we go. Here's the definition of pull planning. Pull planning is a collaborative scheduling method in construction. And it takes a reverse approach to sequencing. This approach takes multiple team players from the project, your last planners preferably, and gathers them together in a team and they identify a key milestone to pull from, or some people say pull to, right? But you create a pull plan backwards from that milestone to identify a proper sequence, to identify durations and relationships within that sequence based on needs. When you're done, you should have all details and requirements on that pull plan as a part of that completed sequence. Not sequencing, but a pull plan that creates a sequence. So let's go over to the flip charts. You knew I was coming over here pretty soon. Uh, you were right. So I wanna draw for you what a typical pull plan might look like, and I'll draw it, but imagine that you have stickies on the actual board or your pull planning wall. So you can see I've drawn over here a milestone. That's one of the first things that you're going to identify as a part of the pull planning process. And a milestone is a point in time or a point of completion or the end of a phase or something that demarks what you want to pull from or pull to, meaning you want a sequence that tells you how you're gonna get to that milestone. Now, once you have the milestone, like we talked about before, you're going to pull it backwards. Now, there's a specific reason for this that I'm going to explain right now. If you go at it from a different direction and you say this is activity number one, what's the next uh, activity in the sequence as a part of your sequencing efforts, you may forget that there is another activity over here that is required for activity two to even happen. So you may forget what actually needs to take place for this pull plan, this sequence of activities to actually be successful. Now, when you do it backwards, so real quick, that's when you go in the forward direction, when you're doing sequencing, when you're doing a pull plan, you're running it backwards and your sticky format will look like this. Typically, you will have your activity duration, you will have your crew count, you will have the actual activity name. So I'll write that down here. And then you'll have something really, really interesting. You'll have needs or what some people call predecessors or what some people call constraints. And so if this is a need, then when you put this first sticky up, then you ask for the other activities as a part of the sequence to be populated on the board based on those needs. So when you do this and you start out with this first activity, by the way, this is the first activity, and you say, hey, well, in order for this to happen, I need this. Well, then you put that up on the board. Okay, well, also for this activity to happen, I need this. Okay, well, let's put that up here on the board. Also for this activity, I need this. For it to happen, I need this. Well, let's put that up on the board. And it populates a sequence in the reverse to where we capture all of the needed activities that are a requirement for that one to take place. And so when you run it backwards by way of a pull plan, not only are you using lean methodologies and only doing things when it's ready, but you're getting a more complete sequence because you're doing it not based on sequence number, but based on need in the reverse. So that's why we do it in the reverse. It gets your mind thinking about the proper things. It's not what's the next thing, it's what do I need? That's why you're moving it in the reverse. 
Got it? Also, I want to say the other thing that you can do backwards if you want based on need is if this is your first video that you're watching, you can hit the subscribe button on the channel and you can go back to the previous videos backwards. It's the same thing. But either way, you get the cool content and you get the complete story if you subscribe to the channel. We want you to have all the videos. So let's do that right now. So let's go through the steps that you will experience when you're going through the pull planning process. Number one, the trigger. Something is going to trigger you to know that you need to do a pull plan. So let's say for instance you have your project schedule and you know you have multiple phases, right? And let's say for instance you have this phase and at the end of the phase you're going to consider that a milestone, right? You want to pull plan the sequence that comes up and to that milestone or that gets you to that milestone. You will likely on your schedule at least three to months ahead of time you'll plan a milestone or a what I call a trigger date or a date or a meeting where you'll actually go through and do this pull plan so that you have this sequence for this milestone. So one of the best ways that I like to trigger the need for a pull plan is actually from the master schedule knowing uh, two, three, four months ahead of time, hey, I'm gonna have to do, or I get to do this pull plan so that I flesh out this sequence, this phase, and I know how I'm going to get to that milestone, and I validate the schedule. So number one, we must have a trigger to tell us that there is a need for a pull plan in the first place. Number two, planning. Now this is typically where I'll do a few key things. I will identify what milestone we're going to pull to. That's how I say it, people say it differently. But this, what is the milestone? And I will get really clear on what that milestone is. Then I will identify the key participants that will be involved with me in this pull plan. And I will make sure that they're invited to the meeting. I will also send them an email saying, hey, this is the milestone. When we do the pull plan, these are the conditions of satisfaction and here's how you can prepare. Because I don't want them to come into the meeting blind. I want them to know when the meeting happens. I want them to know generally what we're pulling to and I want them to know, hey, if we accomplish these conditions of satisfaction, this will be a successful pull plan, so please prepare in these ways. Typically, I'll ask them to either write out their activities and their needs on Excel or on a workbook or on a PDF or to even create their stickies ahead of time. But at a minimum, they must come to the pull plan having read the plans and specifications for that scope of work. So if you make sure that you do some good planning, they won't come in blind and you'll have a good experience. Number three, the gathering. That means everyone's been invited to your location. They're excited to be there. You've given them their snacks. They know where the drinks are, the bathroom, everything they're ready to go. And now they're paying attention and they're huddled around the whiteboard or the wall where you're gonna do the pull plan. The first thing that I like to do within the duration, so let me just use this box as the start and the end of your pull plan. At least for the first 10 to 15 minutes, what I'll do is gather everyone and say, hey, let's go ahead and go through a couple of key things that we need to understand about this pull plan and then orient them. And the reason that I like to start out that way is because then you can kick off any other activities within that duration. A lot of times, the next step that I like to follow, which is actually what I call the pre-meeting, is once I've gathered everybody and oriented them, and I'll put a G for that, then I will do what's called a pre-meeting, and I'll label that PM. And what that means is I'll give them 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes to finalize any of their preparation so that they're 100 percent ready for the pull. They're ready for the meeting. There's no excuses. We're all on the same page. So I've oriented them by gathering them, given them some time in the pre-meeting. You will want to tell them that by email before they come so you respect their time. But then I'll get right into the pull plan and we'll get ready to go. So uh, that's what I like to do in the gathering and the pre-meeting. Now step number five, when you go in and you do your pull plan, I highly recommend you follow these steps. And number one, you will say, uh, what are your conditions of satisfaction? Meaning, hey, this is the milestone that we're pulling to. 
Uh, number two, this is how we're going to do it. Number three, this is what we want to accomplish when we are done. Really outline, hey, what are we doing here? Are we pulling this at a high level, low level, super detailed? Are we getting ready for commissioning, for rough-ins? Are there any owner requirements? Make sure that you're super clear about the conditions of satisfaction, meaning, hey, if we do these things, I, as the facilitator, will be satisfied. Number two, I highly recommend you go in and you, again, identify the milestone. And you've already done this, so you might think to yourself, Jay Money, we're duplicating work. No, 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 we're not duplicating work. That milestone should be clearly described before we begin the meeting. I promise you they'll have questions. The other thing is, we should identify the start milestone. This is something that people ignore, um, not being critical, but I'm just saying we can't do that. Uh, people want to know what they're pulling to, and they want to know also what they're pulling from. Even if you don't focus there and have that be a part of the discussion when you're building your sequence backwards based on needs. So that is number two, to review the milestones and the start one as well, not just the end, but the start milestone. Number three, this is probably one of my favorite ones and one of the most important ones. Number three, you're going to identify your sticky format. And when I say sticky, I mean those little post-it notes, you can call them tags, whatever you wanna call them, or you maybe have your own that you've custom made. But I personally, again, like to see the duration up on the top left. I like to see the crew count on the top right. I'd like to see the actual activity uh, right in the middle. And then down here at the bottom, again, like I said, I like to put the needs. Now, you'll see if you can um, uh, really pay attention to this point right here, I've put a checkbox near each one of the needs. I'll show you why that is super crucial and part of one of the two keys that you have to follow in order to make this work for you. So duration, crew uh, count, activity, and needs. Number four, uh, when we proceed through this process, you're going to give everyone a specific color. So each trade in the room, they're gonna need to know, hey, uh, what color sticky am I, right? Uh, so that they can put up their activities up on the board. It helps us to identify and see crews. It helps us to identify uh, trade flow, and it helps us to make sure that we're working in one process flow. So it's very crucial. That's step number four. Step number five is huge, 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 huge. You're gonna have this person, that person, this person over here, all with different experiences. I mean, you're watching this video right now and you're like, Jason, that's not exactly how I would do it. Totally fine. We all got training at different locations. We all have different opinions. We all have different working styles. So this is what you need to do. You say, what are the rules of this pull plan? Rule number one, rule number two, rule number three, rule number four, rule number five. And you just ask the group, hey, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And then once everybody is weighed in, they can buy in and you say, hey, does everybody agree? Even if you have a different experience, this is how we're running this pull plant. Yep, good, okay. This is gonna keep you safe, all right? Now, follow along with me, please. All you have to do as the facilitator is to get the last sticky or activity in this sequence and then you're home free. And I'll tell you why. Because once this person says, hey, this is my duration, crew count, activity, and my needs, and you're like, oh gosh, who goes next? Who goes next is based off of the needs. It's super easy. Uh, so the person that pulled, uh, they put this activity up here for their scope, they say, in order for me to complete my activity, which is such and such, I need this. Then they will ask another person, uh, who has that activity to come up and put their sticky on the board. Then that individual will say, my second need is this. Then that person will come up and put their sticky on the board. And then that person will say, and I need this. And the same thing happens. And so the stickies are being populated in the reverse based on needs. Now, as this first person is asking for them, once the stickies are up here, we check them off. We check them off, we check them off. And then we know, okay, all of the needs for me to execute that activity are on the board. Now we'll go to this activity and we'll start populating the sequence backwards. When you're done, you know you've exhausted the, the uh, application or the production or the providing of needs, meaning 
you have exhausted uh, the stickies that will be put up on the board, meaning everything's there because you did it in the reverse. And now you have a complete sequence. You've pulled it based on needs, not on sequence. Then, because you've already gone in the reverse, now you can go forward and do what's called parallelizing. It's a horrible word, but it's called parallelization. And what it means is if you have an activity that was uh, finished to start, you can say, hey, do they actually need to be finished to start or can they run concurrent? Basically, you'll find optimization in the sequence and see if you can gain on time without ever hurting a trade partner. So when you're done, you'll have a complete sequence based on needs, not pushing based on sequence. And it's a perfect system. I told you I would tell you the two key things with this that would keep you safe. The two key things is making sure that you set ground rules. You might hear things like, only don't you know don't touch anyone else's sticky right only one person speaks at a time right ask for what you need right the typical pull planning methods if you get everyone on the same page it'll keep you safe and you won't have dissension in your pull plan the second thing is following very strictly the system that i've given you where you checkbox in the reverse based on needs you will have this pull plan done in an orderly and stable fashion and you will not feel frantic or intimidated i promise you so those are the two key things that i highly recommend for every pull plan all right so let's go to number six then you do follow-up and so this is covered in other videos actually on this channel so again i hope you subscribe but the pull plan sequence can either remain and the team can use it for the look aheads and weekly work plans, or it can be looped back into your CPM schedule, which actually I don't recommend, or the right way to do it is to take that sequence, make sure it's identified by the proper number of zones, and that your pull plan is according to the right zone size, and these become your tact sequences in your tact plan. And that is the best way to do it, to also maintain flow, not just in one area, but through all of them. So you must do something with this pull plan when it's done. Those are three options, and there are more. But at a minimum, you will send the data to your trades, you will make sure that they have a visual they can reference, and you will close the meeting with a thank you with all of the meeting notes and any decisions made. When you do this, your pull plan will become a guide, you will have a complete sequence, you will have more accurate durations, and the key thing, your trades have now weighed in, and they will buy in, and they will help you execute the schedule. You will have educated the master schedule with a more detailed, proper, and accurate sequence, and you will have more confidence that you can achieve your milestones. This is a great process, and you can dig in deeper as you follow some of the references that we're gonna give you on this channel. So not only do we have other videos talking about the last planner system, but in the description below, I'm gonna give you a complete guide to the steps for pull planning that will help you as you start your pull planning journey. I know you're gonna love it. This is an amazing process. I hope this video has helped. On we go.